Good day, everyone. Welcome again to another edition of Fayette Focus. Harry Wright with you today, my guest. We've got the Timmons brothers because, John, you're up here uh, early in the spring. Yes, sir, Harry. Um, it uh, was quite a trial to get up here, too, with the uh, weather in uh, Virginia, West Virginia, but I did make it, and it's good being here with you because it's always great talking rock and roll with you. Well, you know, it's always one of my favorite topics, rock and roll and food. You know, I could talk about them any time, and, and uh, it's nice having him up here on this springtime. You guys get to hang out. Oh, definitely, Harry. And one thing I will not bring up is any disco today. Thank you very much because it was terrible in the 70s and it's still terrible today. In case you don't know, folks, this is the Timmons Brothers Rock and Roll Trivia Show. It comes to uh, the Mount Sterling area during their community days. It is a wonderful show. You guys had some good success this year. Really have. Uh, it's been a, a good year. Also, we're doing some of our presentations. So we just recently did one on uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame who is being snubbed and why, uh, which is always an interesting topic to debate. So we do that in addition to the trivia shows. So what, what group artist is being snubbed right now that should not be snubbed? Paul Revere and the Raiders. I could have I could have bet my liver on that, folks. I could have. <laughs> Paul Revere and the Raiders, they need to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, definitely. They had 18 charted he hits, and I keep telling people, and John and I, before we start every show, we say, what group belongs in the Hall of Fame? And now the audience automatically go, what, John? Paul Revere and the Raiders. Paul Revere and the Raiders, because they, well, they, they want to make Dave happy. That's what it is. Um, now, would you, have, you, have you been to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Believe it or not, I have not been to Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because I'm sort of waiting out until Paul Revere and Raiders get inducted. <laughs> Wouldn't that be that'd be a nice trip now, wouldn't it, go oh. up there when they're being inducted? I, I know you'll be there. Oh, definitely. And, and Harry, one thing I want to say, you just mentioned that John and I have won a couple of awards down in the south there, and I wanted to bring that up because John's sometimes a little modest about it because we tell about what uh, what we do, and it, it's amazing that part. But one thing I'm going to do, I might be 100 years old, but I will get to the Hall of Fame when the Raiders get into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> All right, there you go. And uh, yeah, the awards, you guys have got a great show. Now tell everybody about the show and what you do with it down south. Well, the show is a rock and roll trivia show, and the, what the award David was talking about, they give awards uh, college campuses when you tour college campuses through student activities boards called the Novelty Music Award. And since we're not a band or a performer or a, or a songwriter, we do a show about music. We were voted the best act this year for the Novelty Music Act in the, in the college circuit. Uh, so that was quite an honor. Uh, it's a show very s similar to the TV show people are used to watching called Jeopardy, where you have categories and you can pick uh, a point total. And as you go down lower on the board, it'll be uh, more. Uh, it'll, it'll be more difficult. Uh, but the difference between Jeopardy on TV and what we do, we also have audio stumpers where they pick a decade and then we play about. 25, 30 second of a popular song and either have named artists or have to name what movie it was from or, or the song title. And uh, a lot of people just enjoy it because it brings back so many memories because sometimes we'll bring out songs that were really popular but nobody's playing anymore. Like, I haven't heard that one in years. You know, I, I like that part of it too because one of the things I had to do when I was in college, I was in music school in college, was uh, we had a, a history test where you had to know like 12 or 13 different tunes. He's only going to play you 12 seconds or 13 seconds, and you got to know what tune it is and who wrote it. So that's kind of fun because uh, it is a lot of fun, folks. And it's going to be at the Mount Stern Community Days. What's the dates for that? Uh, we're, it's going to be June 30th, and uh, John and I will be appearing at 2 o'clock that day. And also there will be all other activities there. And uh, it's going to be one, one whole day this year. We uh, uh, decided to do everything in one day, so that's Saturday. Come and bring the family. It'll be a fun time for the whole day. If you like rock and roll, there'll be car shows. We're even going to have an old-fashioned sack race for anybody remember what a potato sack race was. <laughs> I know my granddaughter, we went up last year, and uh, unfortunately you had the power outage last year where uh, somebody clipped a pole. That was notorious uh, last year. We were about three quarters done into our show and uh we've done a lot of shows but that's the first time we ever were somebody pulled the plug on us at at first we thought maybe well if you don't like us you know you don't have to turn off the power but we found out it was for the whole village yeah the whole village went out but i tell you it was a lot of fun with the granddaughter there uh, it's a great fish fry it's a community days uh june 30th right yes and uh and everybody the key thing for john and i come out now we're going to have a we one of our members uh dave mcnilly is our dj he'll be playing music 
beforehand the show starts. And we found out later, a lot of people like to sit back and just enjoy to hear from the 60s and 70s. We got feedback on that, didn't we, John? Yeah, we were surprised that uh, that people just sitting around enjoyed the selection he plays. And some of the songs will be used later in the day in our show. So it kind of gives you sort of a preview. And um, we also have a website, uh, timmonsrock.com. I, if people want to learn more about us and our different presentations and how to book us, that's a good place to go because uh, we we are doing high school reunions now too, which it goes really well because we'll go for that era. Uh, for instance, we did a class of 76 uh, reunion, and we focus mainly on questions of music from 72 to 76, their high school years. So people really enjoy that. That's when rock and roll was really kicking, wasn't it? Very good. I mean, you just think of so many good songs uh, from 72 to 76, like we might open up with the Raspberries doing Go All The Way, and then 73 was such an iconic year for rock and roll. Uh, I, I think another group should be in the Hall of Fame, Grand Funk Railroad doing We're an American Band. What an opening intro to that song with the drums and so on. And, you know, you can't forget She's Some Kind of Wonderful either. Absolutely. A follow-up there, uh, All the Girls Beware was the name of the album for uh, Grand Funk on that. And um, uh, so, yeah, the, the, there's a lot of uh, great songs from those eras that sometimes they don't play as much on the radio. And interestingly enough, yesterday on the, on the radio, I heard a song from 1981. I hadn't heard for a long time. Um, and it was a one-hit artist, and it was called uh, Sausalito Hot Summer Nights uh, by a group called Diesel. Diesel. And their named album was Watts in an Engine. It was W A T T S in an Engine. What a good song! What a great song. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna stump Dave here because I've been this question has been nagging at me. Or on the other day I heard uh, on 12:50 a.m. I heard Bob Seger, um, Night Moves. He said he started humming a song from 1962. What was the song? Whoa, boy, you're putting me on the spot, Harry. Ah. Uh. I thought if anyone on the planet knew, it would be what are you two guys? But he, but he says, and I, I, mean, I know somewhere, some in minutia in my mind, I heard the answer to this question. It was what song was Bob Seger talking about? Well, I'm going to throw this one to John. He's my music expert on these. Cause All right. I'm the heavy metal guy, so I'm going to let him take this. All right. What do you think? I know the line from the song where he, it, he kind of slows down the tempo of the song, starts humming the song, 62. But I don't think he mentioned, does he mention the song in, in the song? He never mentions it in the, okay. the title, but somewhere I read somewhere you know, that this was the, that such and such was the song. And it, it hit me, I was listening to 1250, to come on, you know, of course I'm singing along sure. to the Bob Seger. And then he started humming a song from 1962 and it clicked in my brain like, you know this, but you can't remember it. Yeah, um, 62. Uh, wow, I'm trying to think of uh, potentially. It had to be like a make-out song, yeah, you right. know what I mean? Because yeah. the, the night moves is about making out, yeah. Well, I think that's something for our listeners out there to have to investigate. Uh, I got an idea. Why don't you guys come June the 30th to Mount Sterling Community Days? Because between now and then, I know these two guys are going to get the answer to this question. And we will have the answer. Ah, stay tuned. June 30th, Mount Sterling, all day long. Get in there, get you some fish sandwiches, let the kids play on the rides. There's arts, there's crafts, all kinds of fun things going on at the community center. Then at 2 o'clock that afternoon, the Rock and Roll Trivia Show put on by my friends, John and Dave Timmons, the Timmons Brothers. Guys, I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your such busy schedules to come in here and talk with us on, on the program. I appreciate it greatly. It's great being here, Harry, and um, we look forward to seeing the people of Central Ohio come out. We draw a good number from Cincinnati area come on Saturday, June 30th. Last year, uh, we had a lot of people drive many miles because it's sort of like the old Clairol commercials. Someone tells someone who tells someone, and the ripple effect happens, and people hear about, spread the good word, and they go, to, there's Timmons Brothers Walking World Trivia Show. You need to check it out. Now, you might be asking yourself, how much does it cost to get in? Nothing. And this is one of the only shows they do north of the Mason-Dixon line, and it's the only show that they do where it doesn't cost anybody to get in. Isn't that right? Exactly, because you come back to your hometown as, like I said, like just like having the Beatles come back to Liverpool, we come back to Mount Sterling, and so we enjoy it. And it's free. <laughs> There's your Mount Sterling English accent for you, folks. Thank you guys very much.